Hey guys, sitting out here at the end of June, about to get in July, wanted to do a quick little recap of June before we uh, hit the July checklist. We did get the opportunity to get over the Grand Lake with High Water Guide Service and do a little uh, cropping white bass fishing there with the live scope. Um, that's quite the deal. You guys haven't had the opportunity to see that or experience that, but what that is, is that graph will actually tell you or show you that your lure, your minnow, whatever you're using, actually dropping down in the water, and you can actually watch that fish come up there and grab it. Um, and that is that's quite the experience. Um, and we we really enjoyed that, and highly recommend uh, High Water uh, Guide Service. Um, he does a, a great job. I had my five year old with it, with me. Um, she got the opportunity to catch over 30 fish herself. Uh, so just uh, just goes to show you, and you know that uh, he's definitely one. If you guys get the opportunity to go over to Grand. To definitely uh, check into uh, for a good quality experience. Uh, deer hunting wise, um, what we've done throughout the month of uh, June, we did get the opportunity to get through with some of our uh, rough cut uh, swisher mowers into some of our clover plots. This is one right here, and um, we had some vegetation, you know, some taller grass that we need to come in here and actually knock down, and this actually worked out very well. Uh, we did that right before rain, and then. Um, you know, we've been shooting the bow a little bit uh, throughout the month of June. I'll start picking that up a little bit more uh, going forward. Um, and then the workhorse sprayer, uh, that's what we are using. It's a boomless sprayer. Um, so throughout the uh, month of July, uh, we'll start getting into that, that checklist. Um, we'll come in here. If I got it, I've got a couple new spots I think I'm going to try out for some food plots. So I'll get that Swisher Brush Hog in there, uh, get that stuff knocked down. Uh, and then mid-July come in there and spray that thing with the workhorse sprayer. Um, I am using the weed and grass killer. I uh, put uh, three cups. I think they're it's either 16 or uh, maybe 32 ounces uh, cups into this filled up with water. I've got enough to do quite a few of these uh, small you know half acre three acre food plots. Um, and what I'm doing there is I'm just running through here once around it and then I'll end up cut the middle um, you know, so where my tire tracks are, I'll cut over one more time to get that one more rotation um, on each one of them and kill that grass just a little bit more. And then throughout July, I'll get back in here with the rough cut mower uh, wherever I need to knock down some vegetation if there's any. Um, if not, uh, I'll come probably in here and do one more spray uh, on some of them, just a quick overcast, and then I'll be ready to plant there in August. Um, we have been. Uh, moving a couple of our blinds around um, right behind this. I've got a redneck fiberglass uh, blind um, I've got a mock scrape over there. Uh, that was there this year. Or, sorry last last season and it actually worked out very well for us So uh, when it comes to the, the hunting, but uh, I didn't end up moving another one of these to where I had a ghillie blind I don't know if you guys watched that uh, doe hunt from last year, um, but that is the, uh, uh, that's the location I'm talking about and those ghillie blinds work out really great. Um, I hunt that on a, a solid east wind. But what was ended up happening was, is especially last year, during those cold fronts, we had all that wind coming out of the east when I was in there. And we had snow and rain coming right in there. And that just, it, it, got, it kept me covered, but I really liked that awning um, coming out there. Because there was a few times where that rain would come, come in there when that, uh, when that uh, wind was really blowing out of the east pretty strong. So we've got a, a, a fiberglass one in there, uh, ready, to, ready to go. We'll be putting some Analogic food plots um, in there. Uh, one thing I have been doing the last couple of years that's worked out pretty good is my trails. Uh, not necessarily with this guy. What I'll end up doing with, with this is I'll end up putting some camo burlap on both sides of that blind and coming out and kind of making a screening in there. Um, we got some cattle running here at times, so I, I can't necessarily get into a, a screening plot, but I do have several uh, rednecks that I do have uh, screening up along the food plot or a transition uh, corridor there um, that I've got uh, some pretty good uh, screen, screened and then I've, along the fence line or wherever I need to access that blind that I'll actually go in there with the weed eater and cut that blind uh, trail that works out very well. Um, then uh, the water holes uh, and vertical mock scrapes. Um, I don't do a whole lot 
of the water holes. Um, we have got a tremendous amount of water um, on the properties that I hunt, but a water hole can be extremely beneficial if it's placed in the right or in the right location. Um, you'll be able to see a ton of videos out there of guys, you know, putting those things on there. But the biggest deal is, is if you don't have a rock solid pond that's holding, you know, quite a bit of water, or maybe you're up on a ridge top, you know, hunting, that would be where I would go ahead and get you, um, you know, a water hole established. And use, you know, 100, 130, 155 gallon uh, deal there, come in there, you know, with some sort of uh, five gallon buckets or whatever it is, and then, you know, dump all that water in there, make sure you put you a stick, you know, so any kind of squirrel or critter comes out and has an access way out there. Um, and then your vertical mock scrapes. Um, I did end up picking this vine up. I wanted to show that to you guys. Uh, I did touch this on June, but these are really good. Uh, so basically what you're doing is you're just taking some normal uh, string or rope and, and uh, attaching it up here and then hang that thing from a tree about waist high and it'll really produce a, a great uh, um, avenue for those deer to come in and out to make you an ethical sh uh, shot opportunity. And it's just a good way to see a lot more deer um, in the, uh, on your hut. Um, you know, we have been uh, shooting the bow uh, quite a bit. Um, I'll start picking up uh, that, you know, uh, from July, August, and then on. And then we'll touch a little bit more about the way I do, uh, you know, the bow uh, coming here in uh, August. But uh, the other thing we're going to start doing, and we've started uh, doing some of it, is scouting. Um, and right now we've just been running uh, some of our roads there and just glassing with the uh, binoculars, kind of seeing where all the, the bucks are coming in and out of. And once we get into uh, the July month, especially late July, I'm going to start using the uh, Diamondback uh, from Vortex, that spot and scope right there, and that thing will reach out there and you can see some really good uh, quality uh, views of your um, of your deer, as, you know, as well as uh, you can use those things for turkey hunting. I've got some adapters that I can put my phone on there and videotape it, so hopefully we get the opportunity to show you guys some of that. Uh, you know, if that's not available, uh, I do want to cover a little bit more on that. You know, there's definitely a ton of avenues to go. Um, and I, I try to run as many as, of, as I can just to kind of give me those one up on these bucks. But the other ones I want to talk about are those cellular cameras. Um, our main uh, camera that we use is the Cutty Link camera. Uh, this is the uh, J series with the uh, 60 booster pack. They got solar panels, you name it, uh, they got you covered. Um, and that's, one of, that's our main, uh, I run a lot of those cameras. Um, but the other product that we are using is a Browning Defender. I've got quite a few of those, and those are those are cameras that actually can be transmitted video to your phone. Uh, so, and they've also got the solar panels. That's what I do run with. Um, there are 16 batteries inside, and you got your I think there's six of them in the solar panel. And those are definitely ones to look into if you if you absolutely want the uh, videos. I'd highly recommend running with those uh, Browning Defenders. Um, but then other than that, you know, uh, the locations of those cameras, what I am doing is going over the water, uh, water sources right now, especially when it gets warmer, those deer are really going to hammer that water. Um, and then another one's, you know, your vertical mock scrapes, your mock scrapes, whatever you're doing. Um, so those are definitely some pretty good, uh, deals. Um, I do want to touch on a product that we've been been rolling with uh, this is Steve's uh, beef, beef jerky this is out of Oklahoma uh, he's got a lot of different varieties um, I've been eating that when I've been out uh, scouting for deer and just kind of running the roads and seeing seeing what it's all going on and he actually hit me up there uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago and uh, asked if I'd be interested in, in trying to hook you guys up with some of this um, this jerky and I said well sure so we got a, a, a promo established there for the uh, from here um, all the way through the end of uh, 2021 20, uh, there. Um, and if you uh, get on the uh, Steve's Gourmet Beef Jerky, um, I'll show you a link there. Um, you should be able to save uh, 10%. So when you get your order ready, 
just type in, in the promo uh, KOAM Outdoors and you should be able to get your 10% off there. So uh, I think that wraps wraps up what we're going to be rolling with uh, in the month of July. Um, definitely look forward uh, to getting out there, uh, doing some of the uh, you know the deer scouting. Um, you know if you guys are running into uh, some of the uh, oh, ants and stuff in your cameras, uh, this is this is a, a pretty good um, pretty good avenue to go along with your um, your insect repellent. Uh, from Sawyer, either one of those products will really work out well, you know, to put um, on, or sorry, above or below uh, your trail camera or around like your straps. I wouldn't necessarily recommend sticking that on your trail camera, especially if it's out there in the sun a lot. Um, it could probably yeah, damage your casing. Um, I've seen some pictures in the past. And then one other thing I didn't touch on is uh, trimming up your shooting lanes, or maybe you got some camera locations you're getting in there. Um, I always carry that uh, that electronic battery operated, and then I also got some clippers there um, that I always run with, and I use those things quite often. So I think that that covers about everything that um, we'll be doing there for the month of July. Uh, we do have um, the 4th of July coming up, so hopefully you guys are getting out there, uh, get the opportunity to uh, visit with your friends and family and like always best luck on your guys upcoming hunting and fishing season